Hello aviation fans, it's another airplane day here. It's not very common that I do these reviews, but uh, I got a new one here. Uh, so this is the Boeing P-8 Poseidon of the Royal Australian Air Force. And it's made by a brand called Gemini, and they have a line of military planes called Max. And what's great about this packaging, it actually teaches you about what the model you just purchased. So the P-3 Poseidon was the replacement for the P-3, the P-8 Poseidon was the replacement for the P3 propeller uh, Orion, which I have a model of. I'll show later. It's an anti, uh, it's a naval patrol plane basically, and also anti-naval warfare. So there's a lot of sensors. I even read that they're they're trying to have a, a torpedo be able to be dropped by this thing, so it could take out submarines. Anyways, uh, let's see. Statistically. We have registration A47-003, and this has two engines called CFMI, CFMM, whatever, that's a long name. First flight was 2016, but I think that's the first flight of this airplane registration, because Wikipedia tells me April 2009 was the first of the P-8 Poseidons to fly. Uh, around 142 of them were built, according to Wikipedia again. This thing can go 500 miles per hour, has a range of like 1400 miles or so. Here are the dimensions, you know, give a sense of uh, how big it is, but I'm going to just show you models instead. Typical uh, die-cast airplane packaging has a blister inside of a cardboard box. A lot of them don't have this additional flap though. Most of them are just a box, you know, and they also don't have stats, most of the other brands, but that's why Gemini is cool. They actually try to teach you something. Here's the back if that should interest you. Side, not too much else to see. Just the part number though. If, if you're interested in this exact one, look up that part number. Alright. So then the blister always has uh, additional sheets of plastic. And that plastic is to keep the plane from getting scratched up by the blister itself. So let's get that out. So, this is actually, uh, this airplane in real life is supposed to be based off of a Boeing 737-800 ERX. It's just militarized. And one of the militarizations, besides all the electronics inside of it, is they had to run generators two times the size of, of the normal commercial engines uh, generators because there's so much stuff going on inside of there electronically. So they had to actually reshape some of the, uh, I guess, engine nacelles, or maybe the stock for it. Okay, well, I guess that's the best I can get focusing between a photograph and a model with wings. Alright, pretty cool photo here. This one actually has like missiles on it. Phoenix missiles, I think those are. Okay, well anyways, let me put this down while I remove we mount the camera to a better position. Kind of trying to figure out the best way to review these airplanes. You know, they're very often much larger than this, so I have the cam in a higher position than usual. Okay, so it's very nice, you know. First thing that gets my attention are all the antennas sticking out the the spine of this airplane and the way they do it is they drill holes into the casting or the casting is molded with holes and then they stick in these uh, pieces of metal that are painted white so that's what those antennas are they're just uh, probably photo etched metal painted white the finish of this plane is like a matte uh, it's not glossy it's not really gray it's in between gray and like tan it's not like a I feel like there's some brown or yellow to it. Okay. Um, boy. I don't know what these are. You know, they, they don't look as big on the real photographs, but obviously some sort of electronics sensors or countermeasures, maybe. I'm not sure. But uh, it's interesting. If anyone knows, please let me know, because I don't know anything about airplanes other than I like collecting models of all sorts of vehicles. Okay, so the door printing, you know, it's got all sorts of sensors and window prints. 
there aren't many windows on this airplane. There's actually five uh, crew people sitting in a row right around here, I think. So there's just a bank of electronics, and they're sitting in front of the electronics, you know, sensing things. Okay, so those are the uh, engines, and I like that there's some uh, casted in fin details. So that's pretty neat. Not sure about the back though. Oh, well, the back just has like the tapering of the uh, you know exhaust there. Oh, it comes out there and there. Okay, at the bottom here. It's nice that uh, Gemini prints their brand on there so you know who made it. They don't print what the airplane is though ever to my experience. And interesting, uh, this one actually has four antennas or antennae on the bottom of this thing as well. So this thing is just slathered in additional pieces of antennae. Four on the bottom. How many were on the top? Three, seven, and then these four, eleven. So there's 15 antennas stuck into this casting, so that's pretty cool. Alright, and then all the graphics, you know, the Royal Australian Air Force, they're like a matte gray, you know, very faint. But there's a little silver every now and then printed on here as well. And it wouldn't surprise me if some of this text is legible, like with the magnifying glass. There we go, I don't know, let's try it. For four times magnification. Mm, no, I don't think it's legible. Certain brands like Phoenix, you can actually read that text on the door. But Gemini, I guess, doesn't have such advanced printing technology. Okay. Boy, there's all sorts of weird bumps. Protrusions, bumps. I don't know, weird sensors and stuff. I mean, look at the bottom of this thing. All these things. I don't know what they are, but they, they're they interesting. You know, it's just stuff you don't normally see on an airplane. And even back here, is this like an additional radome or something? A rear-facing radar? I'm not sure. Uh, and then I forget what these... It looks like there's a port here. There's an actual hole back here. I think that's where maybe they dump out all the, you know, sewage or something. Or it might actually be an additional uh, engine to power up something, like an exhaust for a small engine. But yeah, what are these little black dots and these rectangles? I don't know. This seems to be a big bay opening here to load cargo or something. Maybe that's where they're thinking about dropping some uh, torpedoes or something. All right, well, then you can see the actual panel lines of all these wings, you know, they're quite small. You know, they're very, very tight. Those are casted in here, but over here, these are printed on the front half. They're, they're printed, printed. But this is cast back here, so... Very nice, cast back on the vertical tail as well. A little silver on the leading edge of the tail. Going to the nose. All these 1-400s have uh, printed on windows. It's just way too small to try to get plastic in there. But uh, it looks like there's even like a little wiper blade printed on. A little black line there. So it's like a silver frame with some dark gray windows. And the nose here is black. I do feel like the nose maybe got scratched up in shipping. I don't think it's supposed to be showing this gray through there, so that's unfortunate. Oh well. And then, uh, yeah, the wheels technically do roll, but uh, yeah, the rear ones roll a little better. I mean, it's strange that they would even bother with something this small, but they, they do roll. Okay. Alright. So a lot to look at. Uh, unfortunately, I, I really don't know what I'm looking at. <laughs> as, I, as I say, I don't really know much about these things. But uh, I'm willing to at least get them. Alright, so... From my experience, you know, the airplanes are too big to put on the, the turning coasters when I compare sizes. So I'm just going to leave this here and then pull out a couple other things. So first thing would be this 18-wheeler, uh, like a Peterbilt. And then... Uh, 
my go-to police Chevy Suburban. So, you know, it's an airplane. It's a mid-size or small-sized Boeing. Um, the P3 Orion. This is the, you know, predecessor. So it's propeller. You know, it's an old plane, prop plane. This might actually still be in service for all I know. This is made by a company called Dragon. And uh, unfortunately, Dragon, I don't think... I'm not sure if they actively make airplanes anymore. But I'm pretty sure you can still find this on eBay. Dragon Wings. You want to look up 1400 Dragon Wings. And uh, the Dragons very often came with a stand. So that's why there's a big hole in the bottom of this thing. But uh, I prefer to keep mine all in the landing gear so I can, you know, compare them like that. Okay. This one is glossy. It's not bad. I, I wish Dragon was still around. They made a lot of cool different uh, subjects and in particular like military airplanes because they have all these weird knickknacks hanging off of them. Commercial planes are pretty much all the same in my opinion. They all look identical. Okay, this next one is also by Dragon. And this is a Lockheed Martin 10, L1049 or also known as the EC-121D. So this is an earlier electronics countermeasure or maybe it's like a radome or something, but it's used by the Navy. So there's something electronic going on up here. But as you can see from the propellers, it's an older airplane. I think these, uh, this might have been called the Constellation in civilian form. And it was used by, you know, civilian aircraft, TWA and stuff like that to transport people around. So it's actually similar in size to, to that thing. I'm going to shoot two more. Or actually, i got two more props here. I don't know where I got... This is a part of a GSE set, Ground Service Equipment set. I forget who makes it. It's a cheap set, but it's a, just, you know, an oil tanker or a fuel tanker. And then this is a diecast metal Volkswagen Beetle in 1400 form. I had to paint it though. I can't remember where I got this. Somewhere online, sorry, can't guide you to who or where, but you can look up maybe 1400 diecast and they'll find it. Okay. So two more airplanes. So let's get into a Russian airplane here. So an AWACS or you know something with a spinning radar dish. This is a, I think a Baryov? No, it's an Ilyushin IL-76MD. The question is, oh great, it says witty wings. I haven't been collecting diecast airplanes in two years, so I don't know if witty wings even exists as a company anymore. But very often in this hobby, the companies come and go, yeah, but the molds stick around. So you might not be able to find it under Witty Wings, but you might be able to find the same exact, exact casting under a different name. Just look up 1400 Ilyushin or IL-76 and maybe it'll come up. But anyways, it's nice. I never knew about this until, uh, you know, I started collecting diecast airplanes. So now, four jets on this one. An older design, I believe. A sufficient, but it's a bigger... It's actually a cargo plane also. I think this is meant to be a cargo plane first, and then they used it for uh, electronic uh, warfare or, or sensing. Alright, the very last one. It's a biggie. This is a Boeing 747-200B but militarized, so it's called the E-4B. And, uh, boy, who made this one? Gemini Jets. Okay, so Gemini again. That's why I like the, how they put their brand on. But this is basically, you know, a 747 with all sorts of electronics going on. That's why there's so many antennas running over the top of this thing, as well as whatever this in, inside this ray dome here. Or, I'm assuming it's a radar dome or some sort of dome. So, interesting. Right. Eh, kind of a plain bottom. 
So yeah, this is all cast metal, including even these tiny little wing antennae. But yeah, if you drop this thing, it's so heavy it's going to break something. Alright, let's see if I can fit this up here. Alright, so you can see sense of scale that the Poseidon is actually not a very large plane. I mean, it's large compared to cars and trucks, but compared to a 747, not so much. But definitely uh, larger than the predecessor, the Orion, the black and, I mean, red and white one. Alright, let's get these out, or actually, give me a moment, I'll get it spinning on its own. Alright, well, as usual, you know, I'm not really let down by uh, one 400 scale die cast. I do notice there's a little bit of a weird brownish stain. I, I guess I'll have to take a Q-tip to this. I'm not sure if this is a, a display model or if it was just owned by someone else. You know, the box wasn't taped together. I don't think any of these airplane boxes come taped because people always want to inspect them before they buy them. So, I don't know the history of this one. Other than that weird, weird yellow wing, which I see around the first antenna, you know, there's no paint bubbling, there's no paint rash or anything like that, there's no gouges or anything. Uh, the nose was missing a little bit of black paint, so it's not perfect, but uh, I'm still pretty happy with it. I'm just fascinated that it has so many things jammed into the body of it, you know, unlike commercial airplanes. Uh, okay, well, anyways, uh, hope you like this stuff. Um, I think I have a B-52 in one 400 scale coming in the mail. And that might be it, as far as uh, get, catching up on the castings. Alright, take care guys. See ya.